Hi guys, thanks for coming back. You um, all have been kind of following this journey with me. Um, I've, I started becoming aware of the situation. Two weeks ago, I decided to take action. Now, I call myself the self prepper because, you know, um, at this point, I'm not really doing a lot about power outages or uh, water outages or just the fact that, you know, the world is going to hell. What I was concentrating on is fighting inflation. Now, keep in mind, I've only started this the last two or three weeks, um, and I thought about what my needs were. But So here are a quick five things that helped me make the very best decisions I could for my food pantry. So the first thing I had to think about was whether to go to Costco or regular grocery stores. Now I have a card, and but my daughter has it, and she is four hours round trip away from me unless we meet in the middle and it's two hours. So I had to decide whether or not it was even worth going to get the card. Now, other than the great buy on bulk paper towels and bulk, bulk toilet tissue, I wasn't really sure that the way they packaged their products would work for me as a single person. Even though I want to buy multiple items and in some things stockpile, I needed to be the brand I liked in the size I liked and be able to pick the quality or rather quantity for each specific product. And so I realized I could get that better if I went to the grocery store. And I would probably take a loss as far as buying my paper towels and my um, toilet tissue from them. Although I did find that Save-A-Lot's uh, double thirsty roll in, in package of 12 at $7.99 is an excellent deal. I bought two and I wish I had found them before I bought the other um, two packs of toilet paper. So that was the first thing I had to consider. And you may have to too. Costco or the grocery store, which one better serves your needs? Because it doesn't make any sense to buy a large packet of something at even though it's a great price for that size, if it's too much, it's too much and you spent more money on a larger size you really didn't need. So something you have to keep in mind. The next unexpected thing I ran into were ex expiration dates. Now normally box food and pastas have an exp expiration date of two years. And when you buy it off the shelf, it's usually dated two years out. For some reason, all food, all box food and all pastas only have a year before they expire. And I noticed the canned goods, the, the furthest out I could see them was 2025, most were 2024, and a lot are 2023. So I can only assume that, you know, stuff stayed out on the ocean so long, you know, until they could get unloaded, that most food has lost half of its shelf life. So that really made a difference about what things I could really put on my shelf or put in my kitchen pantry. I would highly suggest, it doesn't matter what type of grocery store you go to, they all seem to have this short date issue, okay? And the Super Shopper and Save-A-Lot, their dates have always been notoriously short, but now they're even more so. Sometimes they're under 30 days. So you really can't prep for long term with food that's under 30 days. I ran into this problem and I had to make different you know, choices. But uh, the next thing I had to take into consideration is that the reason why all the grocery stores are so well stocked is because they finally got their shipments in and they know that the dates are wonky. So they put everything out on the shelf. My concern is if there's a run on food and all of this surplus goes away, do they have enough left in the back to replenish? My thought is they don't. And so they're going to have to wait to another shipment. That is something else I had to take into consideration about certain foods that I purchased. 
we talked about you know my choosing the grocery stores over uh, Costco. I found there are so certain stores you should not even attempt to buy bulk amount of items at, such as Martin's and Giant and Food Lion. Those prices are so ridiculous now, it makes no sense. I bought a can of collard greens from uh, Walmart for a dollar nine cents. Martin's had them for a dollar ninety nine cents. Um, I bought my hamburger at a time when it was only two fifty eight, um, and then a week later it went to three fifty eight. But Food Lion had their hamburger at four forty nine, as well as Save a Lot. So um, you're really going to have to do some serious, I mean, you may have to do some comparison shopping. I know that nobody wants to run around and use gas. Um, and normally I'm not going to drive across town just to save 50 cents on something. But I will drive across town to save a dollar on 10 items. So it's something you have to think about. So yes, at this point, unless Costco serves your needs, then that is definitely the cheapest route for you to go. But if if you don't do Costco, then Walmart at this moment is the best route. And lastly, food storage. Well, actually, there's one more thing after this. Food storage. I was under the impression that food had to be in a dark, cool room. Because that's what I've always heard. So I did some Googling. Turns out that only applies to food in glass jars. As long as you keep whatever place you have your food stored, between 65 and 70 and you don't let it flip-flop you know beyond that up or down then you'll be fine as far as dark you know close the blinds now if you have direct sunlight coming into the room and is beaming on your food storage spot okay put a blanket up but that dark cool place basically refers to food that has been preserved in glass jars and remember, everyone's situation is different, their wants, their needs, their finances. But this is not quite the end times. And I'm not saying those times won't come. Right now, food that you want is plentiful. And it's still about half as affordable. My suggestion is prep the food you like until it no longer becomes a viable option because there is no reason to suffer right off the bat when you don't have to. The last thing, I didn't know that there are some things that can go beyond an expiration date and still be good to eat. So I actually Googled again and I found a website that explains the difference between expire, ex, expired by, best used by, and what's the other one? Um, best sold by. They all have different meanings. So I put a link to that website in the description uh, box because it was very useful to me and it may be very useful to you. So I've talked enough. Let's go look at this thing. Okay, guys, let's get serious. Let's start with dog we food. We have the dog food bin. There's probably enough dog here for about a good month, probably a little longer. In this bin, we have wax paper, Ziploc bags, and foil. That's probably enough for a good couple of months. Here we have instant corn muffin mix. Also, I found some instant um, biscuit mix some uh, Betty Crocker cookies and uh, muffins, which I like. And then we have a large box of um, baking mix that can be used to make biscuits. I also finally bought a rolling pin because considering 
the state of grain and wheat. I think that those things are going to be scarce and I'm tired of trying to roll out um, biscuit dough with a glass. So yeah, my rolling pin. Really happy about that. Okay, here we have um, trash bags. Um, and I'm going to have to add to this more, but that's probably enough trash bags in three different sizes to keep me going for a little over a month. Here we have women's vitamins, um, contact lens solution, and a couple of bottles of extra virgin olive oil. Here we have suddenly salad that I like to make um, uh, macaroni salad with. Uh, white rice, boiling bags, only one box of brown rice because I'm not a real fan of brown rice. I prefer white or wild rice. Some hamburger helper spaghetti, which is extremely hard to come by, but I only bought one box because the dates aren't good. A uh, couple packs, a couple of boxes of sugar because I, oh, 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 whole world's falling apart. Hold on. Because I only use a teaspoon every day for my coffee. Some more instant spaghetti, which I also like. Popcorn and um, a package of pancake and waffle mix. And actually, I went back to the store, dear Lord, to buy more. And it was all sold out. Um, down here, we have my favorite instant mashed potatoes, quick microwave peas, instant white rice, yellow uh, chicken rice, and brown and wild rice. Y'all know how I feel about my instant rices. Here, we have all my seasonings for chicken, fish. There's some um, onion recipe mix, a couple of McCormick things. Uh, I was concerned that we would run out of fresh mushrooms. So I bought a couple of these. And um, I actually like them. But then I actually found some portobello mushrooms in a can, which is so hard to come by. So I bought a lot of those. Here we also have some instant rice and instant potatoes, in, uh, white potatoes in various um, seasonings, and a couple of um, instant sweet potatoes. Here are just personal items. Toothpaste, a couple extra toothbrushes, some ibuprofen, um, deodorant, Neospon, um, some uh, beauty uh, beauty pads, just some girl stuff. Paper plates, two different types, just the regular paper plates and the soap proof paper plates. Um, lots of plastic spoons, carpet cleaner, dog. Um, alcohol, some small things of um, dish detergent, but I actually have two large dish detergents under the sink. I just couldn't get them in here. Some inexpensive body wash. And I'm not going to lie, I, I usually like bath and body, but when you're trying to buy five and six of things and you got a whole lot of other stuff to buy too, Bath and Body it was not the place I was going to stop. I also bought some extra hand soap to refill my hand soap containers. Down here we have coffee, both regular and decaf. There's chili. There's some nacho cheese because I like cheese and um, and those little chippy things. Uh, two stacks of corned beef hash, uh, sweet peas, two stacks of uh, spinach, we have down here three, looks like three crab meats. And then there are four cans of chicken breast meat for the dog. There are a couple of cans of roast beef and gravy. That shouldn't be there. It looks like almost 12 cans of tuna fish. Oh, no, maybe more like 16, 14 cans of tuna fish. Here I just have, you know, some odd and then things. Um some butter beans, have some carrots and some yams and um, shelf stable milk. You can get shelf stable milk at the Dollar Tree. It's a dollar 25 cents. But right now somebody made a run on it because it's all out. You can also buy it at Walmart for two dollars. But somebody made a run on it there, too. But I hear you can buy it at Amazon for five dollars.
exact same milk, $1.25, $1.99, and $5. You decide where you want to buy it. Uh, two, two big packs of paper towels and four packs of toilet tissue. Uh, I decided to go with three bottles of, of vegetable oil. Um, spicy. If you haven't had spicy ketchup, oh man, it is something else. And only the Dollar Tree has it. So I'll probably go back and get one more just to make sure I don't run out. So blue cheese dressing. A um, couple of things of pancake syrup. Some Spam. I only eat applesauce in the morning so I can take my Advil. But it's a quick fix, okay? Down here we have um, two rows of collard greens, almost two rows of salmon, um, two rows of black beans, um, some bacon with bean soup, which I like, and tomato soup. Um, there are only three soups I like. Crab soup, bacon and bean soup, and tomato soup. Let's see. Oh, my portobello mushrooms. I looked everywhere for these. Only Food Lion had them. They're $1.18. But if you have never had a portobello mushroom, it tastes almost like meat. And a cup, uh, two rows of um, Bush's Original Baked Beans. Okay, so when you take into account the food I put in the freezer, the um, cleaning supplies, hair supplies, and dish and giant dishwashing detergent I have under the sink and all of this including six cases of water the only thing I have not prepped is laundry detergent because right now I have quite a bit in my car all in all I spent seven hundred and thirty two dollars but I did not have to touch my savings my whole goal was to play catch up before prices started getting even higher. Well, okay, and there you have it, the soft preppers pantry. Now, I would like to say that this was kind of hard to film by myself, so please forgive the ums and the actuallys and the guffaws. I would really appreciate that. Um, when it's all said and done, my desire was to prep my pantry in a way that I had a little bit of everything I needed, enough to kind of get me past some of the price increases. Now, I know if this thing goes on for a while that, you know, eventually I'm going to run out of stuff. Um, so the only game plan I could come up with would be to continue to do my grocery shopping every week and try to continue to buy the things I normally buy and I like but also, as long as prices allow, to continue to add to my shelf. Now, I may have to add two extra little side bins because I don't have the kind of personality when I, where I can start stacking things around my house. My ADHD and my COD will kick in so bad, I will lose my mind. I really need everything to be contained where it's supposed to be. But if we get to the point where the things I like to buy are either too costly or not available, if I need to choose that item, let's say I want to have hamburger because it's gotten to the point of $10 a pound, which I can't and will not pay, then I will take it from the freezer. But in the meantime, when I do my regular grocery shopping, I will try to find alternative things so I don't deplete my supplies too quickly. The whole idea is to hold on to normal as long as I can. Now there may come a point where there is no normal and fine I will adapt but there's no reason to suffer before I have to do it. That is just the way I look at it. I know there will be some who don't agree and maybe there's some other salt preppers like me that says, holy crap, that's a great idea. Either way, it's my way, you know. Now, I hope some of the tips I gave you earlier will be useful. And as always, thank you so much for joining me. Stay blessed and stay safe. Take care. Bye.